Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So for today's little sketchbook session, I did do some pencil sketches right here, but I'm not gonna be really showing them that much in today's session because the video footage was a little crusty and I thought it would be just easier for me to show you guys the painting process for today's little drawing. So I am going to be revisiting using gouache once again. I did use gouache last week and I thought it was just kind of like a helpful way for me to get back into using gouache into my sketchbook. So hopefully for the next few pages, or like a few remaining pages I have left in the sketchbook. I'll paint a little bit more, but for the most part, I'm probably going to stick with like pencil drawing or marker drawings for the next few sessions. But I've already prepped the, pa the paper <laughs> with some washi tape on the side, um, just so I can get a clean border before we start to paint. I've already also sketched out the character in the pilot color Eno in the color red, so it's much easier for me to kind of like blend that in like the sketch color with the rest of the paint because it is water soluble. I did forget to use either graphite like normal mechanical pencil or we could use the Prismacolor Cold Erase pencil to either darken up the lines or kind of make it a little bit darker and it won't disappear on me when I'm adding my first initial washes. So um, as I am kind of going through the process, Hopefully I won't be skipping around too much, but I am doing a very quick little time lapse showing me doing the washes for today's piece. And this is just going to give me a little bit of an idea of how I want to kind of like put down certain colors. It also helps me section off things a little bit more easily before we start to add gouache. Um, and I always find that this helps prime the paper a little bit. Sometimes adding gouache that's a little bit on the thinner side to the paper gives me a little bit more of a splotchier look, similar to the watercolor, but it's also just because for watercolor, it's easier for me to mix the appropriate color much quicker than me using gouache, just because I still feel a little bit unfamiliar with it. But in terms of who we're drawing today, I know it won't be particularly obvious because of, I guess like the state of the painting at the moment and my sketches, I don't think I did her justice, but there is something called Project Voltage and it's basically like a collaboration between Pokemon and Hatsune Miku. And I love Vocaloid um, ever since I was in middle school up until now. So I was like taking a look at all the designs that were, okay, let me explain this a little bit. So basically the I guess the collaboration is I think six different like artists drew basically the 18 different types of Pokemon associated with Miku or not associated with Miku, Miku with a type of Pokemon. So like, let's see, a Miku design with a dragon Pokemon, Miku design with a ground type, Miku with normal type, Miku with water type, etc. And the one that I decided to kind of paint for today, and it's one of my favorite designs so far. So as this video has came out alongside with when I painted it, the latest one that was released was the ghost type. And I think it was number 14 out of the 18 types. So I'm excited to see the remaining. But the ghost one is super cute. I love the colors and also just like her overall demeanor. And I thought it'd be fun to draw uh, or kind of paint this particular Hatsune Miku with the Pokemon associated with this type, which is Miss Magius. And you know, it's just kind of something fun to paint. Also, I would love to sketch the other ones potentially or do some videos or just drawing sessions of the Mikus because they have super, super fun designs. And I do like the fact that they have six different artists doing the kind of like the variations of the different Mikus, like Mikus, because you kind of get to see the different like, um, kind of like style choices or how they decide to style each of the Mikus alongside with their associated Pokemon, which is super cool. I had the kind of like a little bit of a hard time picking between the ghost one, which is this one, alongside with the, the, the no, let's see, the ground type one, which is the one with Flygon. I think her design is super cute. I love kind of like the desert theme and kind of like cactus like hair for her. So it's really cute. I also love the flying type one. It's super, super cute. It kind of reminds me of Alira a little bit. And then the other one I really like is the bug type and the water type one, which are both very cute. The bug type seems like very cozy, very like choir kind of autumn type of person and then the water ones is super fun super cute so i would love to do a few more maybe i won't do them for videos maybe i'll just do them in my sketchbook and just kind of like sketch away but it's been a little bit since i've drawn anything like pokemon related either and i don't know if i talked about this 
Maybe I'll talk about it a little bit later since we still have a lot of the video to go through. But right now, um, I've already switched over to gouache and I'm kind of just blocking in a lot of the shapes and putting down a lot more of the flat color first. And then later on, we'll get to detailing a little bit more. I tend to focus a little bit more on the face at the very start, especially like the hair or if there's shadows and like color variations I want to add for like the face, I'll do that first before painting the rest because I don't want to botch up the face too badly at the very beginning or, or no, I rather botch it up at the very beginning so that I can immediately fix it rather than doing it at the very end or in the middle so that I feel a little bit demotivated to finish it because it's not turning out the way that I would like it to be. And I feel like for me anyways, uh, or just like painting in general, there tends to be a place where some things become like the ugly phase. And I feel like I hit that a lot quicker when working with traditional medium, especially with like painting mediums like gouache, where putting down some of the rough colors or putting down like a lot of your flats or just like colors that are establishing your piece. And before you get to really like adding detail and start to render, sometimes your painting is going to look very rough, very kind of, I don't know, like very not up to your standard at that point, right? And it shouldn't be, right? Because it's still in the rough stages, but sometimes it's a little bit um, unmotivating, demotivating, unmotivating one or the other uh, to see your piece at that point because maybe you think oh it's like if it looks crappy right now it's gonna look crappy till the very end like I don't like what it looks like right now so I might as well quit and I sometimes need to kind of push past that a lot of the time especially when I'm working with gouache so even though this piece isn't like my favorite piece that I've painted um with gouache, I still enjoyed it and I feel like I am slowly gaining back a little bit of that confidence to keep using gouache in the future. So hopefully, like I mentioned earlier, I will at least do maybe one or two more pieces in the sketchbook with gouache because it is a very fun way to do like illustrations or like to block in colors or shapes really quickly or if you want to spend a lot of time and make kind of more of a full finished painting it's a good way because you can kind of have like a lot of variety of colors you can also play around with the opacities um, you can help it with mixed media so if you did like marker drawings or pen drawings pencil uh, pencil crayon all that watercolor you can use this because it can be opaque or translucent or like transparent you can definitely use it to help like embellish other drawings that you have so, um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is the fact that the timing for this video was, I don't know, a little bit weird. I don't know if it's because I didn't realize how fast September has been going by. I haven't really thought about Inktober too, too much. So in the back of my brain, I've been kind of like more subconsciously wanting and itching to do a lot more inking recently, but I don't know if I can fully commit to doing 31 days, 31, 30 days has September, April, June, and November. Yeah, 31 days in October. And for me, it's a little bit like, I feel like I should just commit to it and just commit to drawing it every night because for me, because I usually stay up past midnight anyways, just because I'm a night owl and I feel like I like the peace and quiet of night rather than the peace and quiet that you find in the morning, like let's say 6 a.m. So I tend to do my Inktobers once kind of like midnight rolls around. So it's like technically the next day. So technically I'll be starting on the last day of September into the early morning of the October 1st. And that's kind of like how I was able to keep up with the, I guess like the constant uh, ableness. No, how do I say this? The <laughs> Being able to commit to doing the drawing every night because no matter how tired, at least I'm at home because I don't have any plans on at least traveling anywhere that will require me to be gone for a few days or not be in the same uh, location, if that makes sense. So I'm able to always basically paint at night or draw at night or whatever have you. So I'll find time like that. So I might do Inktober. And if I do, like I mentioned, I think in a previous video where I was talking about whether or not I was going to do Inktober this year, is that I might do flower themes and I don't know, I, I haven't decided if I want to do like Genshin characters, Honkai characters, VTubers, my OCs, random people or something like that. I might just make it the same girl. 
I have an OC that I have kind of like unnamed and like not fully developed as a character quite yet or even as like a character design but maybe I'll just draw her with a bunch of flowers or make up another character to do for Inktober but if I do do the flower prompts I'll make sure to put it in the community post so you guys can follow along if you would like to have um, some kind of prompt or if you want to just have some ideas to have for Inktober, then you can kind of reference that as well. So I'm kind of almost for sure that I'm going to do flowers, I think. But I will try to incorporate some kind of character. And I'm going to try my best to do... I don't know what kind of inking I want to do. Or if I want to kind of like approach it in like a digital way rather than traditional. We'll see. I might record like a video or something doing like uh, a week, a full week of me doing Inktober. But it depends on what day I actually start to uh, fully figure out what I want to do. So in terms of for the process uh, for the, today's painting, I am working on the line work now. So I kind of blocked in in a very messy way. It's a little bit patchy in some areas, but for me, I don't really care at this point. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the line work. And I'm still using gouache for this, but I'm deciding that I'm going to use a much darker color. So usually whenever I do line work for traditional medium especially, I like to try my best to find mediums that are able to soften the look of the lines in certain areas. So I don't like having too many dark colors around the face if I don't need to. So I want to pick something closer to the skin tone and make sure that works out to be a little bit softer for that area. If like if I have white objects, I tend to pick like grays that are more like mid-tones, purples or blues, or depending on the color temperature, I could use a light brown. But for today's painting, I decided that I would just use a very dark kind of mixture of colors of whatever I had on my palette that were close to black so that I could get a little bit more of a punchier outline or line work for today's painting and I feel like it kind of helps a little bit because I did like the fact that the colors were a little bit brighter against the stark black of the background. So initially I was going to paint the background to have more of a hazier gradient but I should have done that beforehand before I started to paint in Miku or paint in the Miss Magius at all so that I could be able to place that in really quickly and then cover it up and make it a lot cleaner kind of doing the gradient or any kind of like hazy effect or any dry brushing but having everything else in focus by having everything clean it just becomes a little bit risky and I like I said I don't use gouache too much so I don't have a lot of confidence doing that so I decided that I will just make it um more bold lines so that we can make the character stand out even though it's kind of feels like they're in an abyss of darkness behind them so while I'm kind of working on the line work for Miku and Miss Magius, let me talk about, let's see, talk a little bit about Inktober. The other thing is that um, growing up, I always loved Pokemon. It was like the first kind of video game me and my brother really played and really enjoyed and we both took interest in. And I just love Pokemon like a whole heck of a lot, but I never took him the time to even draw Pokemon that much or even draw animals and stuff. And I mentioned in a video a long time ago that I would like to draw more Pokemon to kind of ease my way into drawing things that were not humanoid characters. So drawing more like creatures and like animal-esque uh, figures, I guess, compared to like an, a human so that I could branch my way into animals because I really don't enjoy drawing animals. I haven't really gotten practice drawing them either. So eventually I would like to, but I would like to ease myself into it by drawing something like Pokemon again. And I don't know, maybe one day I'll do like a session of drawing them in my sketchbook. Maybe not for a video, um, just like in general. And maybe I'll do some digitally too. It's just... In my childhood, I've always like, I guess it's like another thing me and my brother did a lot was that when we would go to the city, because I used to live in like a smaller town or a village, when we go to the city, we would be able to pick up sometimes Pokemon toys if we ever were at like, let's say like a Walmart or something. And my parents are like, oh yeah, you can go ahead and pick out a toy. Like it's been a while or like, you know, we, you, you can pick it out with your money or whatever. So uh, we had a lot of Pokemon toys, but the Pokemon toys that me and my brother wanted or Pokemon that we really liked sometimes were not available as toys. So me and my brother would pick out 
the Pokemon that we wanted, draw it on paper, color it with pencil crayons, um, sometimes outlined it with like a ballpoint pen, and this is like on normal like scrap pieces of paper. We would glue it to cardboard, we would uh, cut it out to make it look almost like ac acrylic standees, and then you would put tape over it to seal it, and you would make like a little stand at the back so they, they could prop up, and those would be like our Pokemon toys. Um, so I've always wanted to, you know, draw Pokemon again, and it kind of relives my childhood a little bit, but enough about that. So, um, I did do a little bit of dry brushing to add a little bit of a glowing effect to Miku's little, uh, wisps in her hair, alongside with the little wisps in the front, so that we could have a little bit of that little, kind of like glowing haziness from them and it can stand out from the black background added a little bit of rim lighting and just some colors of that teal color to miss magius added some kind of brownish reddish color into miku's eyes and then i think that's basically it i am adding a little bit more of like white here and there for the entire piece but i think that's it for today's little painting session i know it looks super rough and very patchy but i'm just glad I didn't abandon it at some point and maybe when I get more comfortable again I will do more painting that's a little bit more ambitious because I tend to do mostly headshots very flat background kind of stuff I I don't know there there's like a lot of things I would like to try also uh peeled off the tape and a lot of the gouache that was on the tape kind of crumbled and cracked everywhere. Luckily, I have this little mushroom vacuum from back when I was, um, I think, at the very end of high school, early uni days, that I would use this to clean my desk every so often from pencil shavings. But it kind of helped clean up the little paint chip shatters, I guess. But yeah, that is today's little painting session in my sketchbook. Like I said, I did some little sketches back here so that I could get a feel of what I wanted to do. So this is done with the palette color Eno color pencil in the color purple and just normal graphite. So I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye!